Hey everybody, so today what we will be making is something out of our salt dough recipes. So if you haven't made something out of it or your clay dough ball went bad, um, pause this video and go back to the original salt dough recipe video and make your salt dough real quick. Um, I had to make another one. I did half the recipe this time um, because I made a little too much last time. So go back to that video and make it once you're done, come back here and I'll show you how to make something out of it. All right, so what I'm gonna make today is I'm gonna make a vase for a plant. Um, I like to keep a lot of succulents in my house. Uh, makes it feel like we have the outdoors indoors all the time. Um, so in order to make a planter, the dough itself won't be able to contain water for very long until it turns into the dough again. So um, to get around that, what we are going to do is you are gonna grab a glass container that nobody's using, you could use an old candle container. This was just, I think, a votive that I never did anything out of. Um, and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be on the inside of my dough. So it's going to form the shape for me and I won't have to do too much. Um, it is raining so I might have to pause the video in a little bit. My window likes to leak and that's right where my camera is sitting. So um, until then, what you first will want to do is you're going to take your dough and you're going to make a pancake out of it. The easiest way to do that is take your dough and kind of slap it because you it's kind of like you're going to make a pizza. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit by turning it and pinching with my fingers. Um, another way you can do that is to actually press it into your surface. Remember you're going to want parchment paper or cardboard or something underneath of it so it does not stick. Um, then once you have it flat, you don't want it super thin because it will tear. The next part is you're going to take your container, I'm going to press it down, and then I'm going to stretch my dough around my container. Now I am finding that my dough is starting to get a little dry and not enough moisture to move in and starting to tear. What you can do for that is just have some water on hand. Warm water is better than cold, um, just like in our last video. And you'll just take a finger's worth, not a whole hand, just one finger worth of water and just rub it on the parts that seem a little dry. This water will now act like a glue and will stick the pieces of clay that are separating together. So got those sides. So this is what it looks like so far. Again, I had like a um, cube-like container that has a hole for something to be put in that will be my where my plants will go eventually and then I am just folding up my dough and being very cautious because if I push too hard I will make a hole out of here and it won't matter because there um, there's a container on the inside so no water will leak out but for like aesthetic purposes or beauty purposes for this project I want to be just very gentle because I wouldn't want a hole there all right so if you're like me and you've gotten this far and if you're doing this you don't have to do um, a base that's just my choice you can use a cookie cutter and make something out of this dough and let it dry or you can make an animal you can make a person you can make almost anything out of clay it's just awesome um, but if you get to this point you are going to go around your clay and make sure that there's no holes or thin pieces and the way you can do that is just spread clay from some thick pieces use the water on areas that are dry to make that glue and spread the thickness around. Okay, so I got this. This isn't that special, this isn't that pretty, but what I can do next is I can take that extra clay that I can feel on the edges and I can mold different things on it. And something that I was seeing online that I was doing when I was doing my research for this was that it'd be really cool to make a face on this face. Um, and just give it a little bit more dimension. Now again, you don't have to do what I'm doing. You don't have to do a face at all. Um, I see people like forming it in just designs by adding nodules, nodules and shapes or line on their vase. Um, some people turn it into an animal. I saw someone who put like the fluffy parts of a sheep all around it and then I put a sheep's face into the edge. Taking some places that are thick away from my face. Another method that you can do before you even push it onto your vase 
um, is you could have like taken part away of like the parts that you needed away from it originally so you wouldn't have to peel away like I am right now. That may have been probably the smarter decision but we're already here we're gonna keep going with it. Now what I'm doing here is I'm sticking it down on the flat surface and making the sides not bumpy anymore so as I put it on a flat surface it flattens everything kind of like you would do with play-doh um if you were to push on a flat surface one side will have your finger marks and the other side will have the flat surface okay bottom all right so I got my base the way I want it now I pulled off some extra parts of my dough so that I can make something out of this like a face I'm going to pick the side that I think will hold the face better and what I'm thinking is the side with probably a little thicker area of clay will be that side that I choose. So let's see, I think this side will be it. I'm going to try to do this so you can see it. So my clay is getting very dry. Again, you want to use a finger's worth of water to put on that clay. The more you play with it, the more dry it gets because your hands are absorbing the moisture from your clay. Okay. So I'm going to peel apart different areas right now. So I'm going to want some eyes, a nose, mouth, and then these can be my ears. So if you want to form an eye, or let's say you were trying to form a head or something that's round, you're just going to want to make a ball in between the two palms of your hands. It'll look like that. Now in order to adhere this or to glue this to your piece, you are going to need that little bit of water. The water acts as a glue agent, so I'm going to put a little water on the clay piece that I'm adding and as well as to the body, the whole vase itself. Alright, so I'm going to stick it there. It might be best if I work this way so none of my pieces fall off. It's gravity right now will push these down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to like smear the edges of my dough into the base, into the base itself. I'm going to flatten that eyeball. Now this could be a part where you could bring in tools. Um, a tool that you could use would be like the tip of a pencil as long as it's a pencil you don't mind getting clay on um you could use maybe like the ridges of a fork and like add designs like where you can take away clay and push into the clay um you could use basically anything around the house of course get permission with whatever you're using and make sure you're doing um using safe procedures with all of those things but for the most part that's you could use anything i'm not using a few things over here so Got that second eye, which I think it was this one. Okay, a little bit of water. Thanks if I want it. Okay. Now, if you add too much water, which I think I'm finding that I did, your clay will start to become mushy. And a quick thing you can do is if you have paper towels around, just quickly dab up the water around your pieces to absorb some of the extra moisture that you created. I'm trying to think what tool I can use. I'm going to use the back of a paintbrush. I'm not going to use the hairy end. I'm going to use the wooden part. And this kind of gets, since it's a little smaller than my fingers, it'll get into the crevices that I can't get into with my fingers. And I'm just pushing down those areas that I want more flushed to or pressed towards the body of the base. All right. So, got my eyes. I'm going to create eyelids. Let's see. Now this one I will want to use my pencil because I want a pointed end. Um, if you get like pencil marks into your clay, that's okay because if you decide to paint this afterwards, it will just cover it up. So what I am doing is I'm taking my pencil and I'm kind of making the eyes like half open and I'm creating a lid. Now granted, I have never made one of these, so you're bearing with me as I experiment <laughs> with my creation, 
but the cool thing about this dough is that it's easy to make over and over again if you have salt water and flour and that's why this time I made a smaller batch so I didn't waste as much okay and the next part is I'm going to add the pupil so the way I can do that if I take another piece of clay very small I cut this actually in half another round ball I'm going to take that paintbrush end again, press it down because my fingers are too big for this. Got little fingers. You're in a good place. If you don't, grab a tool. You could use the edge of a spoon, a fork, a butter knife. The butter knife would give a nice texture because it has those like little bumps. But of course, if you're going to use a knife, definitely get permission from a parent and make sure that it is only a butter knife. No gonna be like a really goofy character let's see if the light can get it there we go so if you can see I got my eyelids the pupil of the eye and the opal eye itself the next part will be the nose we want a kind of a decent sized piece of clay here um, and a good shape to start with for your nose is going to be your ball and then you're going to pinch it only on one end of it. So it'll create this kind of shape. So I'm pinching one part of it and maybe flattening this part so that it can fit between my eyes. Again, we're gonna want a little bit of water, not too much though. I'm gonna press it down. And after I have it pressed out, I can then form the nostrils within my nose. All right, so there's my face so far, eyelids, nose, other eye. Now it's time for the nostrils. So I'm gonna poke in on both these sides. Alrighty, so this is what I got so far. Um, so the way I made these nostrils is I just stuck my paintbrush literally up the clay to make the nostril. And as I did that with my other finger, I pushed against the nostril to actually make it puff out like our nostrils. Um, and then you just kind of got to work with the shape of the, the main part of your nose too as you keep going. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this nose. Let's make the mouth. Now I didn't leave a lot more clay left, so I'm gonna have to kind of make tiny mouth because I definitely want to leave room for ears. And if anything, maybe like an eyebrow or two eyebrows, depending on what you want to go for. Um, okay, so I'm gonna roll my clay this time into what we call a snake. So if you had a rolling pin, that would work, or a pencil, you can use, wherever I put my pencil, you can kind of use that as a rolling pin. To make it more flat and lengthen or you can just use your fingers and I'm gonna take this and try to make a line out of it so I can have two lips the top and the bottom now of course this isn't gonna look like a really handsome or beautiful person because it is made out of clay it's going to look a little bumpy a little wonky and that's okay these are supposed to have a lot of character, supposed to be goofy. Nobody's looking for a perfect sculpted face, just for fun. Okay, so, got my lips. <laughs> Those look so weird. Um, and then I'm gonna add, again, the little bit of water in the place where I want to set my lips. And I'm gonna gently push these because I don't want to lose the shape that I created with this mouth this would be a really good time to have that tool so my fingers don't do some extra pushing that will ruin the shape and I'm just gonna squeeze the edge down towards the base 
and the base is my base of my face. Everything is right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty good. It looks like a decent base. I Once I see can paint it, we can definitely make the pupils and the eyelids stand out a little bit more. <laughs> Um, I think it's pretty good and let me see what I can do to make eyebrows. Maybe I can use the clay up here that I already have. Maybe I can... Oh yeah. <laughs> I can use this and then when I paint it, I can define where the unibrow is and where the face is. So <laughs> there we go. I got a very happy angry face maybe. Now the last part because I'm going to add my ears. And if you will notice, your hands are gonna get really dry throughout this process, but as soon as you go to the bathroom and wash these off, your hands are good as new. Just kind of gets a little frustrating when you're making. Okay, so I have my ears. What I'm gonna do with those is I'm just gonna make a ball, um, and then I'm going to make a base, because I want them to stick out. I don't want them to be flat against my face. I want them to puff out like that. So I'm going to make a flat area and then kind of like a line or half a circle, basically. Add a little bit of water. <laughs> He's so silly looking. It's turned out better than I thought. Got one ear done. Look at that beautiful ear. Now I'm gonna get the extra done. It's always, or the other side done. It's always good to take a look at it in progress versus like finishing it all and then seeing it at the end, just in case there's anything you wanted to go back and um, fix before you move forward. Because we want it to be somewhat symmetrical, meaning equal on both sides. All right, last year. So again, make a ball. I'm going to flatten one side and pinch out the other. So flatten, pinch out the other, kind of get like a kidney bean shape actually. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Look at where my other ear is located. Try to make it at the same place. Now I can't lay this on its side like I did the last time because I will squish the other ear. This looks great. All right, so in the process, I've kind of wonked my face a little bit more, like some of its chin is coming up, but I kind of like it. It kind of goes with the theme of it being kind of crazy and kind of wonky. So that is my face vase. Um, if you wanted, again, if this is what you're creating, awesome. I'd love to see what you make too. Um, if you choose something different, that's completely fine. I'm just experimenting. Um, remember when you want this to dry, it's going to take a while, um, especially since this has multiple sides to dry, I would give it a week and every day you're going to want to flip it. So tonight I'm going to let it sit on the top of the vase so all areas can dry. But if you had something that was flat, like let's say you used a cookie cutter, um, you're going to want to let it dry on one side, the top of the side is getting dry, and then the next day flip it so that the bottom that was against the table can dry too. So I'd give it about a week. Alrighty, so there's my face. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that you have fun creating whatever you choose. Alright, have a good day. Bye.